So in the last video, we looked at the first quadrant and the second quadrant to the unit circle. And like I said before, the first quadrant always has positive X and Y values. So that's why the coordinates are positive and the Y values are positive. Whereas the second quadrant, all the X values were positive, uh, sorry, all the X values were negative and all the Y values were um, positive. So that being said, um, we are gonna look at using the first and second quadrant when it comes to evaluating trig functions. So let's get started with problem example one. So in example one, they want you to find the points, so that's the coordinate points, x and y's, on the unit circle that corresponds to the given angle. So I give you the angle, it could be in degrees, it could be in radians, and you just have to find the coordinate that associates with it. So you're definitely gonna have to use the unit circle, so you're gonna have to flip back and forth for this. So the first one, it's asking for the 45 degree angle. So if you scroll up to 45 degrees, it's in the first quadrant, and 45 degrees is right here at pi over four, and we need that coordinate there, so square root of two over this um, two, and both of them happen to be square root of two over two. So this is square root of two over two for x and y. And they just want the coordinates. Now for pi over six, if you guys remember, pi over six is equivalent to 30 degrees. And so that's my coordinate square root of three over two and one half. So square root of three comes first. So square root of three over two and one half. And then this one here is 135. So 135, let's see, the radians for 135 is three pi over four. And in this case, the coordinates are identical to square, like pi over four, just the um, square root of two over two, the first one is a negative because it's in the second quadrant. So I'm just gonna write that down. Oops, I didn't mean write a three. There we go. All right, next one here is pi over two. So pi over two is 90 degrees um, and the coordinate is going to be zero, one. So I'm gonna write that there. So this is one is at zero, one. Which should make sense because in this case, the X value there is at zero because it's sitting on the Y axis. All right, so example two, they want you to evaluate the sine, cosine, and tangent. So they want all three trig ratios given the angle. So we're gonna have to locate what the coordinates are because remember, sine and cosine are the X and Y values to the coordinates, whereas tangent, tangent is going to be y over x. Um, if you remember back in the bar next to it, x and y's are your cosines, and then tangent happens to be the sine over cosine, which is also equivalent to saying that sine is y and cosine is x, so we can think of tangent as y over x. All right, so going back to this, we are looking for pi over three, so we're gonna go up to pi over three, which is right here, and I'm gonna grab the coordinates, which is one half square root of three over two. And so this is going to be one half square root of three over two. I need to write the coordinates or else I'm gonna forget. And so I already know that sine here of pi over three is equivalent to one, sorry, square root of three over two since sine is the y values. And the x value here for cosine is one half. Now, since I have cosine and sine now, I need to find tangent. And so tangent pi over three is equivalent to y over x. Or in this case, if we think about it, it is going to be my y, which is the square root, square root of three over two, over, put that over the um, cosine, or the x here, the one half. Now if I work this out, I might need to flip this frac, oh sorry, flip the denominator. So you're gonna keep the top the same, so square root of three over two is gonna stay the same, and then you're gonna flip the denominator. So when you're dividing fraction, you gotta flip. And so this will end up being, um, so it looks like the twos cancel, so you're left with square root of three over one, which is just square root of three. 
And so that there is my tangent of pi over 3. So I have my cosine, I have my sine, and I have my tangent. And that's all. So all three trig functions. So for the next one here, we are given pi. So we need to go to pi on our unit circle. Pi is at 180. And so 180, it's negative 1, 0. So I'm going to go back and write that coordinate there. So it's at negative 1, 0. So when I look at this, I'm like, OK, um, this is going to be my x and my y. So that already tells me that my sine here at pi is at 0, because that's the y value. And cosine of pi is at negative 1. OK, now I need to find tangent of pi, which is going to be my y over x. And my y here is 0. So that's going to be 0 over my x, which is negative 1. Well, anytime I have 0 on the top, that causes it to be 0. So tangent pi is equivalent to 0. So whenever 0 is in the numerator and you divide, it makes the overall number 0. And that's all the three trig functions. All right, let's move on to C here. So for C, we have 3 pi over 4. Um, so for that one there, we are going to need to go to our unit circle at 3 pi over 4, which is in the second quadrant at 135 degrees. And it's the um, negative square root of 2 over 2. So I'm going to write that co the coordinates down there. Um, so this is negative square root of 3, sorry, negative square root of 2 over 2 and positive square root of 2 over 2 for the y. So this one's my x, this one's my y. So for sine here is 3 pi over 4 is going to be my y value, so square root of 2 over 2. And my cosine is 3 pi over 4, which is negative square root of 2 over 2. So I have my sine, I have my cosine, I'm ready to grab my tangent, and my tangent's going to be 3 pi over 4, um, which is going to be my x, sorry, not x, y over x. And so my y value is the positive square root of 2 over 2, whereas my x is going to be my negative square root 2 over 2. But what I want you guys to notice is that they're both square root of 2 over 2. They're the same numbers. So anytime you're dividing by the same numbers, you get 1. So like 10 divided by 10 is 1. 100 divided by 100 is 1. So square root of 2 div over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2 is still going to be 1. But here's the thing. There is a negative for one of them, so this is going to be a negative 1. So that's my tangent, my sine. Oops, I didn't do a very good job. Let me circle, and my cosine. All right, moving on to D here. This is pi over 6. So if we go to our unit circle, 5 pi over 6 is going to be in the second quadrant um, at 150 degrees. So that's the square root of 3 over 2 negative and then 1 half positive. So I'm going to write that there. So negative square root of 3 over 2 and one half is positive. So my um, my sign here is going to be my y value, which is one half, and my cosine value here at five pi over six is negative square root of three over two. Then for my tangent, I need to put my y over x, which is going to give me um, square root of or sorry, not square root, my y value is 1 half, my x value is square root of 3 over 2, negative. But it's a fraction, so I do need to divide, so this 1 half is brought down, multiplied by this fraction flipped, which is negative 2 over square root of 3. The 2's cancel because they're diagonal of each other. So this is negative 1 over square root of 3, but you can't have a root in the bottom, so you have to rationalize. And so if you rationalize, top and bottom gets multiplied by the square root of 3. So if I multiply straight across, 
that's going to be negative square root of 3 on top and a 3 on the bottom. So my tangent 5 pi over 6 is equivalent to negative square root of 3 over 3. That was a longer problem, but it's good practice. So I have my sine and my cosine and my tangent now. Okay, last final problem here is going to ask you to, um, that you're given an angle, you have to find all six trigonometric ratios. So the six trig ratios are the sine, cosine, tangent, and then the cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So let's first start off with just making sure we understand what the picture looks like. So usually we would draw a right triangle, and you can. Although this time, I'm just going to draw the unit circle um, with a triangle in it. That helps me visualize that this is on a coordinate system. So I know that this here is, this angle right here, is pi over 3. Now, we've mentioned this before, but pi over 3 is 60 degrees, if that helps you. You don't really need to know that um, to solve this problem, since we're just looking for the ratios. But I thought I'd write it there. And then the radius of a unit circle is always 1, so I already know that. Um, I don't know these two sides, so I need to go back to the unit circle to figure out what are these measurements. So if we go up here at pi over 3, um, I can see that my x value is 1 half and my y value is the square root of 3 over 2. So if I go back down, there we go. So again, my y value um, was equal to the square root of 3 over 2, and my x value was equal to 1 half. And they're both positive because the square root of 3 over 2 is 60 degrees, which is in the first quadrant. So given that piece, I know the entire triangle, so I can find all of the trig ratios. So that's going to be um, sine which is my y value, and so my y value is the square root of 3 over 2. My cosine value is my x value, which is 1 half. Uh, my tangent value is going to be y over x. So in this case here, y is the square root of 3 over 2. And my x value is 1 half. So if I work this out, this will give me, let's see, square root of 3 over 2 stays the same. The denominator I have to flip because we're dividing. So if I multiply, the 2's cancel out. So square root of 3 is the only thing on top and a 1 is on the bottom. So that's just going to end up being square root of 3. Um, now for the next part, I need to find cosecant secant, and cotangent. So for cosecant, if we think back to the um, Sokotoa, Sokotoa, we can remember that sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, right? But when you have cosecant, it's a reciprocal of sine, so it's going to be hypotenuse over hypotenuse over opposite. So this is hypotenuse over opposite. So in this case, my hypotenuse is 1. So I'll put 1 on the top. And my um, opposite here is square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2. So this here is my denominator. I'm going to keep the 1 the way it is. And I'm going to flip my denominator, so it's 2 over square root of 3. And I'll put this 1 over 1. But if I multiply straight across, this is just going to be 2 square root of 3. I need to rationalize the denominator to make the denominator root go away. So this is going to give me... 2 square root of 3 over 3. And I can't reduce the 2 and the 3 on top and bottom, so I'll just leave that there. So for secant here, it's going to be my hypotenuse over adjacent because secant is the opposite of cosine or the reciprocal of cosine. 
So that's going to be 1 over 1 half because 1 half is the adjacent side to the angle. So if I were to divide, this would be 1 times uh, 1 half needs to be flipped so to 2 over 1 since it's in a denominator. So if I multiply, I could put this over 1, multiply straight across, 2 on the top and 1 on the bottom, which is end up being 2. So secant is 2. For cotangent, that is going to be um, my adjacent over opposite. So cotangent is the flip of tangent. So instead of like y over x, um, cotangent is actually x over y, but let's just go with um, the hypotenuse and adjacent. It doesn't really matter, but for this case, cotangent would be adjacent over opposite. Oops, I didn't mean right hypotenuse. Adjacent over opposite. So my adjacent here is 1 half. My opposite here is square root of 3 over 2. So if I divide here, um, this would be 1 half comes down. The square root of 3 over 2 flips to 2 over square root of 3. That means that the two are diagonals from each other, so they cancel. And so now I'm left with 1 on the top and square root of 3, so I need to rationalize the bottom. So I multiply square root of 3 on top and bottom. So this gives square root of 3 over 3, since the root on the bottom cancels, giving the 3. And I think that's all my six trig functions. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all six trig functions. Hope you found this helpful. Um, we'll talk more about these different ways of interpreting the ratio now that we're using the unit circle. So again, sine is equivalent to y, cosine is equivalent to x, tangent is sine over cosine or y over x, um, cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of sine. So um, that is going to be the hypotenuse over opposite. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that's hypotenuse over adjacent. And then cotangent is the flipped or the reciprocal of tangent, so that's adjacent over opposite. Or you can think of it as x over y and then work it out as well. It'll work the same way. So we went over a lot of stuff. Take a moment to digest it. In the next video, we'll complete the rest of the unit circle. Until next time, guys. Bye.